Hello all, in this particular tutorial, we will learn how to create the first Linux virtual machine on using VirtualBox. I am going to create an Oracle Enterprise Linux on VirtualBox. You can use any of the below operating systems such as Red Hat Enterprise Linux, Fedora, Ubuntu, Debian, etc. And these steps will work exactly fine. The two softwares that we need is we need to have the Oracle Virtual Box so you can download it from this particular link and Oracle Enterprise Linux 9.1 ISO you can download it from this particular link. Once the Oracle Virtual Box is downloaded, install the Oracle Virtual Box and then you are ready to create your first virtual machine. Let's start with our tutorial. So what I'm going to do, do is launch the browser and search for but Oracle virtual box, I'm going to search for this and it gives me this particular link. I'm going to go to that particular link and it says download virtual box seven. This is the latest version. So go for that particular version. 7.0.6 is actually the latest version. Click on that. It starts downloading. It's close to 105 MB package. It depends on which version it is. Currently the 706 is 105. Now I clicked on Windows host because my base operating machine is Windows and you need to choose if you are running a Mac, you are, you need to choose Mac. If you are running any other host, you need to choose based on your what host. I am going to do this on Windows and I chose Windows and then you also need to download another package called virtual box extension pack. This is very important. This is required and we'll click on that. It's a small package of 17.7 .7 MB. Both of these packages are downloaded. Now the next part is download the Oracle Enterprise Linux 9.1 ISO. Now this particular package is it can be downloaded from this particular link yum.oracle. So you can see here that is a package for Oracle 9.1 64-bit 64-DVD ISO. Just click on that it start downloading. It's a 9 GB package. It's a big package. It's going to take some time. However, if you if you want to use Fedora or you can download the Fedora so you can say Fedora and you can download Fedora workstation or Fedora server. So let's say this one. This is just a 2 GB of package. So you can see it's 1.9 GB package. So if you if you want to install any other Linux, this is going to work fine. If you want to use Ubuntu operating system, you can download Ubuntu as well. So you can go to Ubuntu and download accept and you can download uh, the free download you can click on that not not this you can download uh where would i be able to download let's look at the <clears throat> download button and we can choose one of these particular options to download this so you can choose whichever operating system now i am going to use oracle linux and as i mentioned this particular tutorial ex exactly same steps will work on red hat fedora ubuntu etc etc with small variation not much now let's close this and let's go to the location where we have downloaded the virtual box so this is the location run as admin and we are going to click as so we are going to down install oracle virtual box 7.06 click s and let's minimize this and click on next whatever options you want to keep or uncheck but i i believe best to keep all of these options they are required if you want to change the location you can change but i'm not going to change it Proceed with the installation now. Yes. And missing dependencies is going to install them. So let's do that. And if you if you see right now, the virtual box is getting installed. An icon appeared on my desktop for the virtual box. All good. Once the virtual box, I'm going to uncheck this, click on finish. We, we downloaded one more package, the extension box. Install that as well. That's a small package reinstall. I think I already had it. That's why it asked for. I'm going to just show you how to install it and that's done. So we got two packages. Now the third thing that we are going to do is we are going to create a directory, create a folder on your one of the drive. I'm going to create it under the C drive. I, I named it as VM. You can name it as anything. This particular folder is where I'm going to store all the machine virtual machines. So I'll say file preferences and I'll change the default folder to C drive VM. That's done. Okay. All good now we are now what we are going to do is we are going to we are ready to create our first machine so click on the machine button so let me 
minimize this let me minimize this it's a little i do not know why it's behaving like this let, let me make it just give me a minute yeah so let me put it in the center and i'm going to say machine new and i'm i'm if you see here it's by default to so windows windows and but i'm going to type oel 91 and you see automatically it changed to linux because it identified that i want to install oracle enterprise linux choose the iso image so click on other where you have stored the location the iso image so that's in the downloads i'm going to choose this iso image i'm going to say skip unattended so if you want to install the unless you you can but i'll choose skip and then click on next and give at least 4 gb i'll give 8 gb but at least give 4 gb and then give two processors i'll give four processors at least give two processors minimum less than two is going to struggle so give two processors give 4 gb at minimum click on next create a virtual hard drive give any size this this is it's not if you say pre-allocate is going to occupy 80 gb but I'm, i have not checked it so it's it, it's not going to create an 80 gb file it's going to create few mbs it's going to be a very small file click on next click on finish all done now let's let's go to this particular machine and say start select that particular machine i can just double click or i can say start and what's it going to do in the background it's going to init it's going to start the the it's going to read that particular installation media and it's going to start the installation so that is the that is i'm going to click on x here and you can see i'm going to type i'm going to click here i'm going to say capture and i'm going to type i and you can see now the install oracle linux 9.1.0 is highlighted i'm going to press enter and it mouse integration i'm going to close this and what it's going to do is it's going to read the the disk the iso image and it's going to it's going to give us a menu for us to select a option so give it a minute and we are there whichever language you are you want to so I'm going to again capture this and click on English. I'm going to do this in English, whichever language you want to do it. You can choose one and continue. And now these are some of the important parts. So time zone, if you want to change the time zone, you can change. You can click here. If you based on the time zone, you can choose the region and you can change the time zone. That's done. I'm OK with this. The the KDUM, if you want to have the KDUM, you can, but this is personal machine. So I'm going to uncheck the KDUM. That's fine. If you want to give the host name, you want to give the host name, you can give the host name. I'll say this is the DB1 or this is a database machine. So I'll give the name as database apply. That's done. And the what kind of packages we want to install. So software with server with the GUI. If you don't want any, if you want other type of like just a server minimal install workstation you know so you can choose one of this particular option the server with gui looks good i'm going to go down and i'm going to choose some additional packages such as the such as the rpm development packages and the legacy unix compatibility so development tools these are the some of the packages that i'm going to install so i apart from i have not chosen anything else all that i chose is linux unix compatibility development tools and rpm development tools these are the only three packages that i installed and if you want to install if you want to install the graphics you can install the graphical uh, you know based on what what kind of packages you want to install you can choose those click on done now installation destination by default is going to create the automatic partition we should be good with that particular partition so i'm not going to change it if you want to change it you can change it click on done and now still it's not allowing us to click on the begin installation because the root account we have not set the root password we have not set so if you want to log the root account we can lock it i'm not going to log the root account and allow root ssh login with the password if you want to allow the root to log in using the ssh you can click on this give a complicated password i'm going to give not i'm not going to give a complicated password we can change it at a later point in time so the password that i entered is password but you can change it at a later point in time so click on done click on done once again because it's a different and now you see the begin installation button has appeared now what it's going to do is it's going to read the disk the iso image is going to create the partitions and all of that 
and it's going to it's not going to download the packages all that it does is like it downloads the packages from those iso image and it's going to start the installation as you can see it says 1332 packages that needs to be installed so right now it's going to install 1332 packages based on what options you chose you might see a higher number or a lower number don't worry about that if there are some missing packages we will install them at a later point in time if there are some extra packages they are not going to get harmed but if you want to remove it at a later point in time you can remove them so now this particular is going to take some time it's going to install all the packages so it's going to take some time i'm going to pause this video and come back when it's about to finish so we are almost about to be done all looks good is going to create users and some more settings and we have reached to a situation where it now asks us to reboot the machine look everything is complete and now it's requesting for the reboot let's say reboot capture and let's say reboot and it's going to reboot the machine once the machine is completed the reboot is completed the next part is we need to we need to install some mandatory packages the actually the reason why we need to install those mandatory packages is because if i if i so let's say start setup location services if you want to keep it on you can keep it on i'm not going to keep it on if you want to connect any of your online account you want to connect you can connect i'm going to say skip first user so let's say we want to create a user called oracle if you want to connect to enterprise linux login you can if i don't have the enterprise give the password for the oracle login so give the password for oracle login and I'm, I'm giving the simple password so that's okay we can change it at a later point in time start using oracle linux server so we have got oracle linux installed do you want to take a true of oracle linux i'm not going i'm going to say no thanks now if you see here this screen is is a pretty small it's not allowing us to make big it's, it's a very small screen it's not allowing us to you know it's not allowing us to make that big so what we need to do is there is another package called virtual box guest edition we need to install that particular package now but before doing that there will be some mandatory packages that are missing and because of those mandatory packages missing it won't it won't allow us it won't allow us to actually install the virtual box guest edition so what i'm going to do i'm going to shut down this particular machine once i shut down this particular machine i'm going to create i'm going to create i'm going to go to the settings so i'm kept clicked here i went to the settings i'll go to the network i will add another adapter this time i'll say enable network adapter and i'll choose bridged adapter click on ok so now i got two network adapters one is the one is the net adapter and the second one is the bridged adapter so the net adapter and the bridge adapter click on ok and i'm going to click say start so let's wait for the machine to come online and it's booting and we are and now let's log in if you want to log in as a oracle you can log in if you i'll log in as a root user so let me log in as a root user now some of the distributions won't allow like ubuntu will not allow you to log in as the root user the oracle linux or red hat allows you so i have logged in as a root user you click the this is the net adapter this is the second adapter which is off i'm going to click on wire settings and i'm going to just uh, i'm go i'm going to okay what i'm going to do is i'm going to just say wire okay i'm going to say connect so i i said connect and what i'm going to do now is once that is connected i'm going to run a command called ifconfig and it will give me the ip so the ip for the second adapter is 192.168.1.7 i'm going to take a note of that ip so i'll launch putty i launch putty and i launch that ip 192.168.1.7 how did i get this particular ip i just turned on this particular network it was not turned on i turned it on then I ran a command called ifconfig. It gave me an IP 192.168 for zero, the second adapter, the S08 adapter. 
that's the IP that I'm using here 192. Dot, if you can see 192.168.1.7 I'm going to use that particular IP and I'm going to log in to this particular machine I'm going to log into this particular machine as a root or Oracle whatever you want to log in so let's log in as a root user once that is done now we are going to install some mandatory packages these are the mandatory packages that we are going to install so I'll put this this document this particular document has got those packages listed so I'm going to put this document in the description so you have you can if you want you can refer this particular document so these are the packages that we are going to install so I'm going to install all of these four packages so I'm, I can do that all together so what it's going to do is it's going to go off the internet it's going to get connected to the internet and it's going to download those packages and it's going to install so let's wait for those four packages to be installed whatever packages that we mentioned here one and along with this it might install some additional packages because it will what it will do is like it will find out if there are any dependencies so it will try to find out those and it will install those additional packages as well so let's let it let us let's wait for this packages to be installed give it a minute so right now it's here then gcc then make so these are the four packages so gcc now that's the one which is getting installed and finally it will install the make if it is not already installed so let's give it a minute and make okay that's all good so the last one was make and that's already installed so that's good now that packages are installed go back to the server and what we'll do let's close this let's close this and you can see that i'm still not able to i'm still not able to make it big so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to click on i'm going to click on this devices i'm going to click on the devices click on insert guest edition cd image i'm going to click on that it will prompt it will prompt uh and you can see it prompted us with this click on run and then it's going to install the virtual box guest editions you can see it right on your screen it's going to install the virtual box guest editions now what are the advantages of this particular package this particular package allows us to make the screen big one it allows us to share the folders between this particular windows machine so whatever files if you want to access the files from your windows machine into the linux it allows so it allows us to create a shared folder and also if if you type if you type something here so if you copy something here and you want to copy that into the virtual machine you know it won't you won't be able to do without this particular so if i just now i've copied it see here i copied this particular and if I, I can paste it i can paste it but if i try to paste it here if i try to paste it in the terminal it won't work you can see it's not pasting it's not it's not pasting whatever is here it's pasting here it's not pasting so this particular all of this can be done using the virtual box guest edition so what we're going to do is we are going to say shut down h now so we are going to shut down this particular machine and i can just close this it's taking a bit time so i'm going to, i'm going to close this i'm going to go to the settings I'm, i clicked on this particular i can right click i can click on the settings go to the advanced say shared clipboard enable that to bi-directional so from windows to linux from linux to windows bi-directional that's done click on settings one more time go to the shared folder let's say i want to access the c drive of my windows machine so let's say i want to access the c drive of my windows machine so c drive and give that an auto mount which means that every time the server is restarted it will mount that particular c drive click on ok that's done that's good now let's start the virtual machine and see the magic three things is going to happen it's going to it's going to it's going to bring up the screen in a in a big it's going to make the screen big that's one thing whatever cop whatever copy that we do on our windows machine whatever command that we and if we want to copy that to linux we can copy that and third thing we can access so let's log in as a root once again so let's log in as root and what we are going to do is you can see now the screen is pretty big we got a big screen it was not possible now i'm going to copy this i'm going to just say copied copy from windows i'm going to take this i'm going to open the terminal and i'm going to 
paste it in the virtual box in the Linux environment. So right click paste and you can see whatever we copied from Windows that is pasted. And if I say this is from Linux, I'm going to I'm going to take this. I'm going to take this, copy this, and I'm going to try to paste it on the notepad of my Windows server. So whatever I paste, copy it, I pay, copy it from here, we are able to paste it here. So the copy paste is working. That's a good thing. The full screen is working. That's the good thing. And now let's see if we can access the files from our Windows. So go and you can see there is a C drive. This is the Windows. You can see Windows and you know, uh, boot this is the windows drive this is the windows drive that we can access from our linux server so that's the advantage of the shared the virtual box this is the in the virtual box we were able to do a lot so with this with this we have successfully set up we have successfully set up our first linux virtual machine not only that we also connected to that particular virtual machine using we were able to connect to that particular virtual machine using the the putty we were able to connect so we did that so we were able to remote connect to that and we were also able to copy the files we were able to copy the text from windows machine onto the linux from the linux to the windows and we were able to access the windows c drive windows c drive into the linux so if i want to copy a file let's say if i if i have a file here uh, let me say this copy i'm going to paste it into the this one and i'm going to go to that vm and firefox and if i want to copy it to the documents i can copy it so that copy paste works so you can share the files from windows into linux from linux to windows all works fine i hope this particular tutorial was useful i'm going to share this particular link so you have the access this was your tutorial on how to create your first Linux virtual machine. We used Oracle Enterprise Linux on VirtualBox. The same tutorial will work for Reddit Enterprise Linux, Fedora, Ubuntu, Debian, etc. I'll record another video for Windows, but till then, enjoy. I hope you found this particular tutorial useful. After watching this particular tutorial, you will be able to create your Linux virtual machine if needed on VirtualBox. Thank you for watching and see you in next tutorial. Bye-bye.